What is going on? Welcome to the channel. This time we're talking about this beautiful Zonti's 703F. And guys, this is a special bike. This is the first three-cylinder Chinese motorcycle. And I'm very excited to see what it has for us. So, if you want to see acceleration, handling, technology of this bike, then you clicked on the right video. I'll hop on the bike and let's go. Let's see what it has for us. And as always, before we start riding this bike, I'll talk about specifications real fast. So this is 699cc three-cylinder engine. We have 97 horsepower and 75 Nm of torque. And uh, as I've just mentioned, this is the first Chinese three-cylinder engine. Other than the engine, we have fully adjustable Marzocchi front suspension, over here we can see that you can adjust pretty much everything you want. Uh, this suspension is really good, very high quality. From behind we have a monoshock, which is fully adjustable as well to my knowledge. Other than that guys, we have 310 millimeter dual disc and we have four piston radial caliper, which comes from JG1. You know how much I like JG1, so I'm yet to discover whether stopping power of these brakes is good or not. Obviously we have dual channel ABS. Uh, from behind we have a pretty big disc. Um, I think it might be 260 millimeter single disc um, And uh, this is JH1 caliper. However, I'm not sure one or two pistons If you know something about that, please let me know in the comment section below We have pretty cool Michelin tires over here other than three-cylinder engine J1 brakes and full adjustable Marzocchi front suspension and rear suspension. We have a whole bunch of tech. We have blind zone radars. We have a windshield which can actually readjust on the way. We have traction control, ABS, quick shifter. The only thing this bike is missing is ride by wire. However, some people do not like it. Yeah, guys, this is one very beautiful motorcycle. The price of this bike here in China is 43,800 RMB which is super cheap, given that we have pretty much every single thing you want. Speaking about ergonomics, this bike is pretty big. The seat height is 845 millimeters. We have 22 liter tank capacity. We have very wide handlebars. And guys, I will tell you that this bike in person doesn't look bad. Mm, it's a little bit too fancy for my liking. However, I feel like it's, it's pretty good looking. Tell me what you think about the design in the comment section below. I guess it is time for me to hop on the bike and let's start. Let's see how it goes, shall we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and one more thing, guys. We do not have a key. So I'm not a big fan of it, actually, because it's a little bit too complex. Yeah, so apparently we can start the bike. All right, let's go. 6.5 inch TFT dash uh, doesn't look bad mm, right now we have uh, sport mode this bike has two power modes sport and eco yeah let's listen to the engine shall we so we have a soft limiter the bike does not allow you to go more than 6 sound rpm but we have only 19 kilometers on the odometer and actually even though this bike has quick shifter the quick shifter will be available only after the first thousand kilometers check those buttons traction control a mode button yes yeah, seat apparently we can heat the seat up if we want all right guys yeah i've been talking for some time 
first gear let's go <laughs> Ooh, some skidding all right i like it so far bike doesn't allow me to go fast because we have this braking in period <laughs> you know what even though we cannot go more than 6,000 rpm I still feel like it's pretty fast. <laughs> I still would measure this acceleration, guys. I still would tell you something. So the official number, um, the official acceleration is 3.2 seconds from zero to 100. Uh, top speed is 195 kilometers per hour. Um, of course, with this uh, stupid limiter, okay, with this limiter, I cannot get to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.2 seconds. But still, I mean, it's pretty rapid, guys. It's pretty rapid. <laughs> Obviously we cannot go more than 6 thousand rpm or something But guys, just now we went from 0 to 148 kilometers per hour like that I mean, that was pretty, pretty dynamic if you ask me And the acceleration wasn't bad um, We're going to check brakes one more time, ready? 60 kilometers per hour or something, third gear Breaks. Not bad. This bike is pretty fast. Again, top speed is not super impressive, but it's more than enough for pretty much everything. And guys, one honorable mention is the gearbox. Obviously, we have six-speed gearbox, and just now I was shifting pretty, pretty often just because we couldn't go far in uh, revs uh, the gearbox was so good not a single time did i slip into neutral and guys when you stand like this you can find neutral pretty much every single time my only complaint is that the throttle when you ride a little bit slowly i would say in slow speed might feel a little bit jerky from time to time uh, i think the jerky is not the proper word the proper word would be unpredictable uh, it's predictable, but it's not as predictable as I want it to be. Um, especially given the amount of power. This bike is fairly powerful. Uh, 97 horsepower, 75 newton meters of torque. This bike is fast. Uh, and um, I think that I had this problem on the new NK800, where this throttle was pretty good and very, very pleasant to operate with. However, when you were trying to go fast, you just didn't know exactly what to expect from it and um, I had the same feeling about this this bike but other than that guys I would tell you that this bike is really cool uh, again uh, my second complaint and I guess this is the biggest complaint is this windshield because look 
this button over here has to uh, bring it up and down check this out I press it for three seconds I release the button look it goes up and down all right up and down um, so what should I do what if I want to bring it up I don't really know what to do and this is a brand new bike guys I mean I don't really know what would happen to this bike to this electronics in five years so this is my biggest complaint I don't really think that this bike Zontis 703F should have this redundant electronics with this uh, windshield tell me what you think about that but um, other than this uh, stupid windshield uh, I feel like all those other features they're pretty cool so we have uh, radar a uh, blind zone radar and every single time the car is approaching from behind and the bike can identify a threat you can see that those two flowers they don't look like flowers but this is just my perception of those signals those two signals they start blinking or glowing so you know that there's something from behind and um, again I didn't get used to this technology but this is my first day riding this bike and I guess it's not as vivid and as bright as I wish it to be so sometimes it's really hard to see that um, especially with your side vision so you have to look straight into this corner to see what is going on uh, but I think that with the time you'll just get used to it you'll know that this feature is available and uh, it will be no problem whatsoever in terms of reading um, really cool dash guys uh, 6.5 inch dash uh, fully colored um, it's not as advanced as on um, let's say some CF motors like maybe it's just as good maybe I'm just not giving it enough credit but so far it looks good but it doesn't look as good as uh, a dash 5 inch dash let's say on NK800 but overall the dash is pretty fun ergonomic wise this is a very very pleasant to sit on for me I am 1 meter 85 centimeters the seat height is 845 millimeters so I think that it might be a little bit too tall for some people however this is an adventure bike and most of those adventure bikes they're pretty tall uh, again the seat height is adjustable so obviously if you would be purchased in this bike and you need a taller seat you can get it straight from the factory probably you'll just uh, pre-order uh, the higher option in advance uh, but I feel like you cannot make it lower than that uh, I might be wrong speaking about brakes guys um, you know how much I love J1 and uh, these brakes are good but I would actually question the ABS when I was braking really hard I didn't feel ABS engaging and I know for sure that this bike has dual channel ABS obviously this is something this bike must have um, however when I was trying to brake as hard as possible I didn't feel ABS engaging uh, so maybe I just turned it off accidentally but if I did I don't think it's my problem because I didn't want to do it on purpose <laughs> yeah so maybe it happened accidentally and such a thing as ABS ain't supposed to happen ain't supposed to be turned off by an accident tell me what you think in the comment section below uh, speaking about gas tank we have 22 liter gas tank which is all right um, there are bikes which have more than that but uh, I feel like it's pretty all right for what it is guys um, other than that I would tell you that I ride with a passenger and I feel like the bike is pretty maneuverable not as maneuverable as MT450 but this is the bigger bike in a slow speed when you try to maneuver around I feel like it will be a little bit less pleasant and approachable for an average rider we're not talking about top tier uh, high level performance athlete <laughs> yeah but for me guys I feel like this bike is a very very good solid option yeah uh, I really want to ride it once again uh, when uh, it has more than 1000 kilometers on the odometer so all those features such as quick shifter and full power would be available so I can actually ride it to the best of its potential but even with this limited limited power and limited uh, features 
this bike is pretty decent guys if you would tell me like oh listen guys so this is the way you get it it cannot be better and I'll be like mm, yeah it's pretty good so what about the price and they will tell me oh it's 43,800 RMB I'm like wow actually that's a very cool deal look at that um, MT800 from CF Moto would be almost 20,000 more expensive than this and technology wise these bikes are very very close power wise these bikes are very very close one can argue that this bike has more technology however yeah as I've just mentioned I think that this technology is redundant and it doesn't make the bike better but overall guys this bike does have some useful tech it does have some useful super useful features and so far I like it a lot and again this is my first Zontis the first Zontis on the channel and I'm super curious guys I'm dying I really want to know what you think about this motorcycle please let me know in the comment section below what do you think about the price what do you think about this electronic <laughs> electronic windshield what do you think about power what do you think about everything uh, yeah I'll read all your comments as always hey yeah, guys with that being said I feel like this bike is awesome subscribe to my channel if you haven't hit the like button if you like my video or if you like the Zontis 703 yeah and as always guys I'll see you in my next videos new bikes are coming stay safe take care bye everybody